It's a beautiful Sunday. Kumar and Raju are out on the field playing throw ball. After a long day, they feel bored throwing the ball around when Raju suggests a ball throwing competition. They understand that they need a fair way to judge the competition. They see their friend Ramu going home when they drag him and ask him to judge. Both Raju and Kumar agree that Ramu would point at the ball and for whoever Ramu points highest would be the winner. Kumar throws the ball first. Ramu sees the ball go high in the air. Raju throws next. This time around, Ramu points his hand much lower. It is obvious to us that Kumar has won. Ramu's hand pointed higher for Kumar than for Raju. But wait, there was something else that also indicated that Kumar had won. It is another mathematical quantity which shows that Kumar had won easily. Can you figure it out? Of course, it is the angle at which the referee pointed. If you notice carefully, the angle by which Ramu lifted his hand for Kumar was much higher than the angle for Raju. But wait, does this mean that angle and height are somehow related? If both angle and height are more for Kumar, can we use angle as a way to measure the exact height at which the ball was thrown? Welcome to the Banyan tree. Today is all about trigonometry and what it means. Let us take a closer look at the triangle. If you see the diagram, you see two right angle triangles. Let us name these triangles as A, B, C and A, D, C. If you look closely at the interior angles, we can see that the angle in green is smaller than the angle in brown. We are now trying to see the relation between the height and the angle of a triangle and are trying to see whether we can get the exact height of a triangle knowing only the angle of the triangle. Let us now observe what happens if I increase the angle of the smaller triangle. We can see that the height increases along with the angle and if the angle decreases, the height decreases too. This means that in essence, I can say that the height of a triangle depends on the angle or that the height of a triangle is a function of the angle of a triangle. But you might be thinking, what exactly is a function and what does it do? Imagine that you have a magic box. You don't have any idea what goes on inside, but you do know one thing. You know that if you put in 30 apples, you get back half an orange. Maybe you put in 90 apples and you get back one full orange. And if you don't put in any apples, you don't get any oranges. Basically, the box takes in m apples and gives you n oranges. In a general sense, the box takes in m objects of one type and gives back n objects of a different type. This is exactly what we call as a function. A function takes in one particular number and gives out something else which may or may not be the number that you put inside the magic box. In this case, we can say that n is a function of m. Or if we put the value of m inside the function, we get a value of n. In more mathematical terms, we would express this function as n equals f of m. Or n is a function of m. You might have seen many examples of functions previously. For example, polynomials are excellent functions. Consider a first degree polynomial p of x equals x plus 10. Here, if we give x any value, let us say 3, then p of x will give out a different value. Here, it will be 13. Suppose we give in minus 3, then we get back 7. p of x is simply the magic box that we just saw. But wait, we know exactly what p of x does. Basically, we know that if we put any number inside the p of x box, we know that the number that comes out of the box is 10 plus the number that we put inside. Won't this be something useful in our case of the ball throwing competition? Say that I was able to get the exact height to which the ball was thrown using just the angle of the triangle formed, it would clear without doubt that Kumar won the competition. In our triangle, we know that the height changes with the angle, or that height is a function of the angle. Now what is this function and how would I find such a function that gives me the height when I put in the angle? Now we just need to find what f does right. What is the special function which give me the height of the triangle when I put in the angle of the triangle? Let us try to decipher what this special function does. Now unfortunately, it's not some simple kind of functions like our polynomials that we saw before. But why is that? If I bring my angle down to 0, the height becomes 0 too. Well it's nothing special. But notice what happens if I bring my angle close to 90 degrees the height becomes very very large. A small number like 90 degrees gives out a number that is very large. So large that we call it infinity. That is why this function is very special. 
finite values of angles gives out infinite values for heights. So we give it a unique name. Let us call this unique function as t. So we say that height equals t of angle. When we put in the angle of the triangle inside the function t, it gives back the height of the triangle. All is good. But what if the triangle is something else? As in, what if the base of the triangle is larger or smaller? Notice that when we increase the base of the triangle, the angle remains the same, but we get a different height. This means that our t function won't work anymore. For example, if I put in 30 degrees inside the function t and I get 20 centimeter for the height, then for the new triangle, the angle is still 30 degrees and the t function still gives 20 centimeters, but the actual height is much larger, maybe even 30 centimeters. So what's the matter? Why is it not working? Well, the only other thing that has changed apart from the height is the base of the triangle. If we increase the size of the base, the height also increases, provided the angle is kept the same. This means that we need to include the base as a factor in our t function so that we can get the height of the triangle just by getting the angle. But how do we do that? Consider a notebook that you have. It is 10 cm wide and 20 cm long. Now let's take this notebook and make it bigger. Now we have two notebooks which look exactly the same except one is just a bit bigger. All angles of the notebook remain exactly the same at 90 degrees. Now let us find the ratio of the side lengths. We do the length of the notebook divided by the breadth and that gives us 20 divided by 10 which is 2. For the larger notebook, the ratio of the side lengths is 40 divided by 20 which is again 2. These notebooks are perfect examples of similar shapes where we make one object bigger and the angles remain the same but the side lengths change proportionally. So however small or big that we make the notebook, the ratio of the side lengths will always be 2. Now let us go back to our triangle and check out how this applies to our case. We know that if we put in a particular angle inside the t function, we get a particular number that represents the height of the triangle for a given base. So if we put in 30, I will get a height as 20 for any value of the base of the triangle. So as in our notebook example, if I modify the t function to be the ratio of sides of the triangle, the t function will give the height of any triangle given the angle and the base of the triangle. This is exactly what we call a trigonometric ratio. The t function is called the tangent function or tan for short. So if you're given any right angle triangle, you can find the height of the triangle using the base of the triangle and multiplying by the tangent of the given angle. You might have heard of common trigonometric ratios such as tan theta. This is nothing but our tangent function where theta is the angle of the triangle. Its most common representation is the ratio of the height to the base. This is the beginning of trigonometry. Thank you for watching.